The reason that the body positive movement failed is because people did not transition to fat liberation. Body positivity is about learning to love yourself, you, and like your self-confidence, right? Fat liberation, on the other hand, is about like fat people as a whole and, and, and people in general unpacking the fat phobic societal beliefs that we are all instilled with. How can you give such a simple understanding of body positivity, but then go go give so much nuance to fat liberation, dude? Did you hear what she said about body positivity, bro? It's because people did not transition to fat liberation. Body positivity is about learning to love yourself, you, and, like, your self-confidence, right? Dude, like, what? One sentence, dude? Body positivity is about understanding that there are things about you that you may not be able to change and that's okay you're supposed to accept those things because how else are you going to live it's better to at least acknowledge the thing that's working in your disadvantage and work with it and then it is to just consistently resent it and not like the fact that maybe you don't have legs or maybe the fact that you you have a mental deficiency of some sort like the and the important thing is that you you acknowledge it you accept it and you move on. That's what it's all about. Because like, there's no, there's nothing good about living a life of resentment. Understanding that you have something that you don't like, and not wanting it anymore. But there's nothing you can do about it. It's just having you just you have to live with it. So it's better to acknowledge it and move and move on with it. And then fat acceptance is, I guess, all the things that she listed. But I feel like the reason why body positivity didn't work is because one. So many people on the fat acceptance space and the fat liberation space chose to hijack it because in general, body positivity was never about being fat. These people have hijacked it because one thing is very clear is that you can change being fat. And these people are very, very adamant about the fact that they cannot, which is one of the reasons why they are so incredibly embedded within the body positivity space because they fundamentally disagree with the idea of fat being something that you could just lose, even though we have tons and tons of things like Ozempic nowadays and other things, um, even conventional weight loss, such as organic weight loss, calorie deficits, which will incur weight loss. But these people, I guess, fail to understand that you can lose weight. So they always, so they're in the body positivity movement. And I feel like that's one of the main reasons why it's failed is it's just because it's just, you guys have literally hijacked it and try to make it your own thing. Right. Fat liberation, on the other hand, is about like fat people as a whole and, and, and people in general unpacking the fat phobic societal beliefs that we are all instilled with. I just when they say like fat phobic beliefs that we're all instilled with, I think they got to be really careful when they say that, because if you're talking about simple things like going to the doctor and the doctor telling you that you're fat, therefore you should try to lose weight because you're probably going to die in 10 years or, hey, you have type two diabetes or you're on the brink of diabetes. So you should probably lose weight in order to like get back into shape. So that way you can get far away from those diabetes. If you count those things as fat phobic in society, then you're lost. You have absolutely no credibility to talk on this at all. And you know what to top it off, like the amount of like non nuance you gave to body positivity pretty much seals the deal on that it's really crazy because like okay you might have an example when it comes to oh i wasn't hired from this job because i was so fat like i get that but then you also have to look into it you weren't hired for that job because you just don't meet the criteria or the constraints in order to uh, uh, properly fulfill the job in order for in order to properly fulfill this job right like so, so i'll give you an example if you need to stand up for like 10 hours a day or eight hours a day Dude, are you think that like Victoria here is going to be able to stand up for eight hours a day? If they, if they can, it's not going to be sustainable. It might be like one or two days at most, but definitely not three, four, five days in a row. Absolutely not. And even other jobs. How many fat people do you know that have the, the, the inability to not be tired in a day? I meet so many fat people that tell me they're consistently tired. They're consistently in bed. They're consistently have no energy. They consistently have just hormones are just perpetually just fucked, big fucked all the time because it's like always waking up on the wrong side of the bed. It's always waking up three or four hours early when you're not actually waking up three or four hours early because your body is perpetually on life support trying to keep you alive and it's always being taxed at any given point in time. By unpacking those beliefs and kind of taking away the like negative association with fatness, that there should be some sort of negative annotation on fatness, right? Like that should just be a thing. Now, if you're 10, 15, 20 pounds over or whatever, 30 pounds over, you're probably fine. That's for like most people. Most people fit into that category when it comes to that. But then when we talk about people that are like in the hundreds or 200 pounds over, such as Victoria, I understand that for regular people being fat 
if you're just like 15, 20, 30 pounds over, it's fine. But in your Victoria's case, when she says this, right, when she says we got to get rid of the negative context behind being fat, she's applying herself, right? She considers herself, herself to be fat. For the, the vast amount of people, it's probably okay to be those weights, like to be 10, 15, 20, 30 pounds over. But when she includes those people and says it's okay to be fat or like we got to get rid of the context, she's including herself. So she's also taken uh, uh, taken away her accountability from take from losing weight because she's saying that it's okay to be fat. You understand? Like she's lumping herself in to the majority of people when she herself is not the majority of people. She is far and away outside the normative value when it comes to being fat. This woman is literally like the one percent of the one percent of obesity, dude. This woman is literally uh, on the deep end of obesity. That is what is going to make you consistently association with fatness that is what is going to make you consistently not only feel good in your body but it also changes the way that you view the world there should be some type of if you're looking in the mirror and you see that you're two three hundred pounds over and you don't see a problem with that that's not the best i'm gonna keep it a bucket you dude i can't i literally i was about to say it's it's not it, that's okay it's not okay. That's actually terrible, dude. That'd be like the equivalent of you waking up and looking in the mirror and seeing a heroin, seeing a heroin needle in your arm and going, this is fine. This is okay. It's not fine. It's not okay, dude. You have people around you that need you, that rely on you, that feel like you're responsible and things like that. And you're just like throwing your life away for, I don't know, like an extra cheeseburger or four. It's just not, it's just not worth it in my opinion. And these people have the audacity to sit there and go oh no it's fine we're like it's completely okay to be fat it's completely fine like in general being fat is fine it's not it's not and if you want it like for being 10 15 20 pounds over it's fine but in her situation dude no like fat people in general other people's bodies in general like that is kind of in my opinion what the end goal was because personally yeah i love myself but that isn't always going to be the easiest thing for everyone to do and it's like, if you're, let's say, a fat person, right? And you're like, you know, I love myself even though I'm fat, right? It's like, or you change your mindset and you ask yourself, why is fatness seen as something negative to begin with? Because of all the health complications, because of type 2 diabetes, because of the joint pains, because of the high blood pressure, because of, I, there's like a ton of reasons why somebody wouldn't want to be, most fat people don't want to be fat. Can we just cover that right now? Most fat people in the West, do not want to be fat, but they're fat because it's convenient to be fat. It's very easy to eat a lot of food and not really think about the consequences of that because you're probably not seeing the consequences of that. Most people are fat and it takes, most people that are fat, it goes like this. You're 19, you're 150 pounds. You're 22, you're 170 pounds. You're, you're 28, right? You're, you're 215 pounds and it keeps going like that. You incrementally over like two, three, four, five years, you maybe gain 30, 40, 50 pounds over those small periods of time. Suddenly, by the time you're 30, you're obese. And that's a problem. And some people are a little bit faster than others. Some people are just obese from childrenhood, right? And uh, that's really fucking terrible because that's not even really your fault. That's just your, your parents' fault fundamentally. But I'm not going to blame the parents on this one, dude. I mean, it, it is their fault, but like that's a, that's a whole nother thing. But there's a smorgasbord of issues when it comes to being fat, and all of them are not good, okay? You might be able to find some benefits in the sense of, like, I'm fat, therefore I don't need to eat for many, many days at a time because I have so much calories on my body at any given point in time that I could probably fast for literally weeks and be okay. You could say that, but most people are not doing that, okay? Most people are not gaining weight with the intention of, like, I don't know, having like all this calories built up on their body just in case they're in a survival situation, they're going to be good. It doesn't make sense. We have so much food in America. Um, we have so much food in the West that people got to practice a little bit of responsibility, dude. Like back in the day, if you didn't have a lot of food and you ate a lot of food, it makes sense because you didn't have a lot to eat. Nowadays, there's so much to eat. Now we got to take our time and look at the food and go, I'm not going to eat this now because there's so much food, okay? Practice some resistance. But not even that. Um, what about like the attraction aspect? What about like most people not being attracted to fat people in general? I know these people are always, always, always upset that they can't find people to be with. And I always think like, if you are fat and you consistently complain about all the things that affect you while being fat, such as stairs, such as not having elevator access, such as the doctors telling you that you're fat, not being able to fit in two or three plane tick, two or three plane seats, all these things, right? And not being able to find a boyfriend. I always think, why are you still fat? There are so many reasons not to be fat, dude, and enjoying your life and more, more than just sitting down 90% of the day. And once you start unpacking that belief, you kind of start like pulling at the thread of like what you were taught to think in an inherently fatphobic society. 
these people go too deep on this. It doesn't, it doesn't need to go this far, okay? Surface level on this, okay? Why are you fat? Because you ate too much for the majority of people. What is it doing negatively affecting your life? Uh, well, uh, systemically, forget about the systemically for a second, okay? Like, I get it. Like, stairs exist. That's a systemic problem. I get it. You didn't get the job because you're you're too fat. I get it systemically. But, like, let's let's take that away for a second. What is it doing to you right now negatively for your health? Anything at all? If you can't think of a single thing, then you have a problem, okay? Your joints that's number one. You don't even have to look very internally, like in the sense of like, what is it doing to you in terms of your blood pressure and things like that? Are you waking up? Are you having joint problems? Are you having a tough time tying your shoe? Are you having a tough time walking to work or getting out of your car and walking up there? Are you out of breath from that simple two minute walk? Are you? If you are, you got a problem, okay? Acknowledge the simple things because most of the time it is those things. And I promise once you start losing weight, once you start actually being responsible for yourself, then you'll, all those things will alleviate. And then the byproduct of that is you'll live a better, healthier, more fulfilling life as a consequence, which is not really of a consequence, but it sounds cool when I say that. And once you do that and unpack your biases against fatness, you start to see the flaws in the way that this entire society talks about bodies, talks about attractiveness, talks about worth and how much worth is tied into what you look like. We have, an, we have entire industries dedicated to how people look, and I don't think those are going anywhere. It is kind of weird. You remember, like, back in 2016 or 2017 and 2018, there were, like, NASCAR girls that used to, like, come out of, I don't know, what, the pits, I guess, after or, like, before the, the racers came out, and they would be, like, a whole bunch of very, very scantily clad women, and they would have... I guess bathing suits on, but the bathing suits would have a ton of product placement on there. So you get like Jiffy Lube or maybe you get some like little Debbie's Donuts or something like that all over them. And these people came through, right? And these feminist group came through and they said, this is objectifying women. This is literally terrible for women. We need to stop this right now, okay? And the women were like, wait, hold on. No, we don't. I'm getting paid $300,000 to do this. And it's literally just me stepping out on the tarmac for like... 45 minutes at most and then I go home with my kids and I eat like lunchables dude and then they said no this is objectifying we need to stop this right now and they got rid of it and all these women were out of a job there was like 40 or 50 women that were just out of a job okay I think instead of policing how people make their money like for instance I don't have a problem with people doing pornography right like most people are doing jobs already and if you're getting paid more money to do pornography and that's basically a job regardless then you should you should do that if you want to right it's I have no problem with that but I just think it's really, really interesting when people go, we have industries dedicated to how people look like, and that's gross. I don't think it's gross. Um, we have we have value on a lot of things and how they look, and I get it. Like, it may seem gross surface level, but, like, these are how some people make their money. These are how some people make their jobs. And I don't think there's anything necessarily with so, – no, no, there's nothing necessarily wrong with looking at somebody else's body and then judging it for whatever reason you think to judge it. You know? Like, it's fine, dude. People get paid for this. So – I understand, like, in your scenario, it probably isn't the best, given that you don't look the best, and maybe you're being negatively affected by that because society is not deeming your body to be as beautiful as, like, another person's body, but, dude, like, you, that's, that's like the, that's like the incel argument where the guy goes, like, oh, I'm such a nice guy, I'm so, I'm, like, I'm so funny, I'm so kind, I, I always treat her right, but she never picks me. Why do you feel like you should be picked because you're acting like nice to somebody, bro? It's the same thing here, like, why are you acting like, oh, my body isn't, is, you know, judging bodies is disgusting. You're projecting, you're projecting OD here. And the problem is a lot of these content creators that we're seeing kind of backpedaling, they never made that leap, right? It was just about themselves and it was just about gaining an audience and like using that as a way to kind of perpetuate their brand further. It was never about the collective. It was never about changing the way that they actually viewed bodies and aesthetics and fatness and like just the society that we live in. So most people don't like most it's such a the way she's looking at it is so incredibly deep. And most people when they do anything, it's very passive. Most people are not learning things directly or they're not doing like, all right, look, it's okay if you're going to school or you're going to school and you're studying things like that. Like, yes, you're doing that directly. But like, once you get out of school, most people are just living their life. Most people are just going to work. Most people are having kids. Most people are having a wife or a family, whatever the fuck. And they're just doing that for like 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Right. And some, sometimes maybe in between that you do learn things deliberately, but most people like on these grand scale stuff, no, they're just kind of going about their way and they're doing their thing slowly, but surely. And if they pick something up, it's usually because 
it's passive. Like you learned it from a YouTube video or a TikTok, or you learned it from those people or like friends and family and stuff like that. Most people are not going out of their way and reading like 40 million books to discover like the deep industries of somebody's butthole, right? So when I hear people say this, like they're not learning, they're not doing this, they're not, they're not really trying to uncover the deep intricacies of fat phobia. Nobody is. Nobody is. And you don't either because I know you don't because you are also incredibly surface level on this, dude. You literally sit there and you blame society on like everything and you never go into why society has these things in there to begin with. You always go, society is the problem. Society is the problem. We need more jobs. We need more equality. We need more like this and this and this. But like, why are these things stated? Like, why do we have stairs? Why do we have doctors that tell you it's not a good thing to be fat? Like, these things are very, very important. Well, that is why the body positive movement failed. Body positivity is about the self. Calibration is about the collective. The way in which body positivity was co-opted was never sustainable. Anyways, it is very clear when people like get to a point in body positivity that is like beneficial for them, but they don't do the extra work. So those biases that they had against fatness and fat people and like whatever, they're still there and they're still prevalent. So now that's why we see this trend of like body positive creators losing weight and becoming fat phobic. That's the problem. You I, okay, I see what you're saying, dude, but that doesn't necessarily mean even if they did the work and they chose to unlearn their fat phobia, but then they lost weight in the process of doing that. I think a lot of people are probably doing this where maybe they had a they had a particular thing that they were saying, which was like, hey, body positivity, fat liberation, whatever, like love your body, love yourself. It's great. to, It's fine to be fat. It's completely OK to be fat. And then you lose weight. OK, and then you realize, oh, wait a minute now. I was this size for a long time and I thought it was okay, but then I lost weight and now I feel amazing. I feel so good that I can't even believe that I was fat for as long as I was. This is incredible. And then because they have that experience, because their, their mind changes so drastically on that particular front, that they choose to bestow upon the rest of their audience and however they it chose to achieve that audience, they go, hey, I was fat this was not good. I am now not fat and I feel amazing. It's great. It's beautiful. It's awesome. Like my life has improved immeasurably. You guys should probably do that. And you're considering that to be fat phobia, which I guess in your mind is fat phobia, but it's not actually fat phobia. What it actually is, is that somebody was fat and now they are no longer fat and they are now feeling way better. Okay. They have uncovered the truth. They have seen the light, if that makes any sense. The grass was greener and it is greener, dude. Like on this, you know, they always say like the grass is greener, greener on both sides or like on the other side, which is bullshit, by the way. I remember a gay dude try to tell me that shit one time because I was having a conversation with him and he was like, hey man, um, bro, I'm just, I'm just, by the way, UPS employee. I'm just sick of like all these women, dude. They always like taking so long putting on clothes and I have to buy them all this stuff. And it's like, it's, it's just agonizing, you know, it's just agonizing. I was like, I know, right? I know. And I, you know, I was like 21 at the time. I had no experience with women at all. So I was just kind of agreeing because I thought it would be cool to agree. And he was like, yeah, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about just taking, I'm thinking about taking the plunge on the other side. Like I'm thinking about seeing if the grass is green on the other side. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I think I might want to see what, what guys are all about. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. I mean, yeah, bro. I mean, if that's what you want to do, that's no, pr yeah, go ahead, bro. That's completely fine. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What about you? And I looked at him. I was like, what do you, the fuck you mean? What about me? What? What you talking about? What you mean? What about me? Like you thought that I was going to be the guy that you thought that I was going to go over to this other side with you? Nah, I'm good. I'm good, bro. I'm, I'm all right. It is such a crazy thing to even say to be like, yeah, bro. What about you? As if like I was even, at, you know what I'm saying? Like I was not included in this. I was you know, like I agree, maybe sometimes women can take a long time to shop, but I'm not going to just transfer over my lips to another man's phallus because of that. Like, I'm all right, dude. I'm like, if you want to do it, that's fine. But like, not for me. I'm good. I'm good, dude. I'm completely fine on that. And I told him, I was like, oh, uh, nah, <laughs> I like girls, bro. I like women. And he was like, yeah, you're right. But, you know, I think that maybe it could be better. And I was like, whatever, bro. I got off the bus early, bro. And I walked to the rest home. Dude, I'm not trying to talk to a guy. Like, he was literally subtly trying to convince me that I was gay. Like, he was trying to tell me that maybe I was the gay one deep down. Whatever, bro. I've had too many experiences with dudes trying to convince me I'm gay. See this trend of, like, body positive creators losing weight and becoming fat phobic. That's the problem. You can lose weight. That's fine. But these people are... 180ing from like a body positive platform to like an anti fat. Yeah, because most of the time, dude, it's literally like seeing the light. It's literally seeing the light. If you, 
It's like being oh, your whole life, okay? Can you imagine this? Your whole life, you were fucked, okay? You had you had no idea how bad it was living your life. But to you, it was normal. It's like living in a house and the smoke detector is going off. And it's not like going off. It's just chirping because the batteries are dead, right? They're dying. And instead of taking down that smoke detector, right? Which would be very simple, by the way. Just take it off, turn left, take out the battery, put it another one in there and put it back up. Some people live like that. They live with that smoke detector chirping for their 10, 15 years of life, which is crazy, by the way. I don't know how those batteries last that long, but they do. Anyway, that's your life. You're living in an apartment and your smoke detector battery is beeping and you just think that's okay. You probably don't even acknowledge it anymore. And then one day somebody comes over and they take that smoke detector off the wall and they replace the battery. And then you realize, oh my God, I've been living like this for fucking years. Some people don't even know they live in like that. Like when you go to somebody's house, like, hey bro, uh, what is that? The smoke detector? And they go, what is that? What do you mean? Uh, that beeping, that beeping you're hearing right now, what beeping? I don't hear any beeping because they've lived with it for so long. They don't even realize it. It's the same thing. When you've been fat for your whole life and you're dealing with all these problems, you just assume that's just how you should live life. Like this is normal for you. And you could, you assume that everybody is living like that. But when you lose weight and then you realize, oh my God, I was really, really bad. I was really hurt for a long time. And I had not known because this is all I known. And then you you, you come on the other side and you lost that weight and then you realize, oh my God, I feel so much better. Of course you're going to tell people, even if you like, you bestowed upon everybody else, this misinformation of being fat, good, beautiful, be large all the time because it's good for you. And now you realize being large and being big is not good. And then you want to tell people this. That's usually what's happening, Victoria. It's not that these people are like fat phobic. It's just they've come across new information and the old information is wrong. You get what I'm talking about? It's like learning anything new. 180ing from like a body positive platform to like an anti-fat lose weight platform. And that is the problem because it just shows that they never cared about community. And that- Man, these people are so caught in their ways. They can't even real- they, 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 They're they literally unable to realize that somebody could change their opinion and it might be right. Like they might actually feel different and that it's not about you or shitting on fat people. It could just be, hey- I was wrong for a really long time and I didn't know I was wrong, but now I know I'm wrong. So I'm not going to continue to be wrong because I don't want to be wrong. I, just, I don't want to be purposely wrong. It's okay to be wrong and not know it, but it's not okay to be wrong and know it. That's a problem, dude. Ignorance is bliss because how do you know you're wrong? But if you know you're wrong and you're still grifting off that, yeah, that's terrible. Victoria is so caught in her ways. She's literally out here telling people that they are bad people for losing weight and telling people that it's good to lose weight. Terrible. Weight platform, and that is the problem because it just shows that they never cared about community. And it's not that they've never, bro, if anything, that means they care more about community because that means that they're willing to risk the audience that they've accrued be off the back of being fat. They're, ris they're risking it in order to tell people the truth. That is 100%. That means that they care more about the community, dude. And they care more about the moral of it. They care more about uh, instead of like sucking it up and keep grifting and maybe making a paycheck based off of like a lie, they're going to say, fuck that. I'm going to tell people the truth. And that is what upsets people because it was a clearly selfish motivation. If anything, it's selfish on the other way. Dude, you're more selfish for accepting a paycheck that you know is wrong than you are to not accept a paycheck by disposing the truth. And this isn't to say that if you're just body positive, like you're a bad person or you're selfish, no. But I do personally believe that body positivity should be the stepping stone to fat liberation. Crazy. Because once you change the way that you view the world as a whole, and you think people's values should lay outside of their bodies, and they should just be able to exist however they are, in whatever state they are, that I think is when we will achieve true freedom. There should be, look, I get it. I really do get it, dude. Like people should be able to exist however they want to. Completely fine. One of the best things about being in the West is that for the most part, you do have that autonomy where you can live however you want to. And I don't even necessarily have a problem with people being fat and living life. Fine. I don't care to be honest. I just have a problem when people live that life and they despise this ill will, this, tr this, this non-truth of no, being fat is actually perfect and it's fine. It's beautiful. It's amazing. Actually, right? That's what I that's what I, that's what I have a problem with. Or if you don't know the truth about being fat, which most people do, but a lot of people don't. That's the problem. Like we don't want to hear the misinformation about your ideology. You can go ahead and live your life being fat. Being in America gives you that option more than almost any other country. Go ahead. Go ahead. Slay queen edges on that. 
But when you start saying bullshit, dude, that's the problem. That's the problem we have. Weight discrimination is associated with almost 60% increase in overall mortality risk. To be clear, this has nothing to do with a person's body size and everything to do with the, exp the experience of discrimination itself. This is, that is why fighting against weight stigma is essential and life-saving. These people reach way too far in places that they just should never reach. Like how, how much of a, how, how much of a grift is this dude where you're literally seeing the truth and you're going, but it's not because of that. It couldn't be because of the main reason. No, no, no. It's, it's literally probably because somebody told me I was fat one time and I was depressed because of that. Is that really what it is, dude? Or is it, could it, could it be that the high blood pressure, the, 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 the chances of you having more increased risk of, of diseases and things such as so forth, could it be that or um is it just somebody making fun of you like wh wh which one is more which one do you think on average would be the the one that 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 affects people more on average fat people have a lifespan that is about four years less than thinner people my theory crazy i mean you could literally read about this but okay my theory is that without the oppression and the discrimination and medical neglect we would live longer than thins because fat is natural and protective so the medical discrimination is probably like the you go to the doctor and you go, hey, I have this joint problem and my knee hurts like all the time. What can I do to like get this problem solved? And the doctor goes, um, yeah, probably this issue is associated with you being fat. I mean, it's, you know, you're 350 right now. That's obviously not the weight that you should be. You're five foot three. Um, you should be probably closer to 130 and then you can you consider that to be medical discrimination or fat oppression when in reality that's just the doctor doing his job like he's he's probably seen this most doctors know I mean you could probably get tested for it and if you're in America depending on your health insurance you could probably get tested for like almost anything but it's going to be way difficulter to get those tests run on you when you're very very fat like mo a lot of machines don't really even fit you depending on how big you are if you're like Amberlynn Reed size you literally can't even get some of the tests in general um but like when you go through and they would consider that by the way to be fat phobia like oh I can't fit in like the C, the, the the scanning machine you're fat phobic well I'm sorry dude like how how do we like what do you want us to do like order another one for like four million dollars that, that the company's an extra 40 percent person no and then by the way even if you did do that there's no guarantee that that machine will be as good as the machine that this size because we make it at this size for a reason so yeah they would consider all that to be fat phobia like that's how deep these people are in they can literally see the truth that they are the ones suffering from the problems of being fat. And instead of going one plus one equals two, they are instead going like one plus one equals oppression. You know, like it's not because I'm fat. It's because it's not even that. It's like one plus ketchup packet equals oppression. That's literally what it is. It's like so far off the deep end. Like this shit doesn't even make sense in general. Ozempic, i.e. good because I don't have to see as much fat people waddling around, but... Ozempic, i.e. bad because fat people can now hide their spiritual fatness under the cloak of physical skinniness. Damn. Uh, 3D chested like crazy, dude. I mean, there's nothing else you can say about this. You're spiritually fat and you're just basically like wearing a facade. You're wearing the cloak from Harry Potter from the Deathly Hollows. You know what I'm talking about? That invisible cloak that Harry Potter wore, dude. Man, that's basically it. Like deep down underneath that cloak, you're still a fat person, but all you realistically are doing is you're just hiding it. You're just hiding your fatness under this now uh, physical skinniness, which, you know, if I'm gonna keep it a buck, if you wanna be, okay, look, if you wanna be a spiritual fat person, I think you should have all the power to do that, dude. Go ahead, 100%. Being a spiritual fat person is way better than being a, a physical fat person. That is like, oh, without a doubt, man. I don't even know what that would even entail to be a spiritual fat person. I guess like, like you just think about like little Debbies all day. Like, what do you? What is even a spiritual fat person? But regardless, be a be a spiritual fat person. Forget about a physical fat person embrace the physical skinniness that should be the message right here i just ate a banana a fruit that diet culture legitimately tried to convince me was unhealthy how insane who 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 said that who said a banana wasn't unhealthy you know what's actually really weird bro i was i was outside today dude and there was a black guy that was walking like i was walking this way and he was walking this way so we were gonna like cross paths 
and I was just like watching a podcast, you know, like on my phone, like I just have my phone up, you know, listening to a podcast. And this guy, he like stops. He's like, Hey man. I was like, yeah. He's like, you want a banana? And he pulls a banana out of his pocket. And I was just like, no, nah, I'm good. No, nah, I'm good. And he didn't even say anything. He just kept it pushing. And I just thought like, that was really nice of this guy to stop and offer me a banana. Nobody has ever offered me a banana in my entire life, with the exception of maybe my elementary school teachers, obviously, because, you know, you're fucking in elementary school, of course. But this is the first time in my entire life that somebody has ever offered me a banana. I should have took it just off the principle because, like, I wouldn't have ate it. I don't know what he did to this banana. He could have, like, had it in, like, next to his penis or something like that. But I was not going to take fruit from random people off the street that's crazy i don't even know this guy but yeah this guy offered me a banana i don't know i thought it was really interesting and that literally happened today but um yeah no bananas are fine i mean they're high in calories like sure but like it's all right like what is the alternative what are you gonna eat like four chicken tenders yeah eat the banana bananas are fine they're totally okay whatever you want dove partner <laughs> this person's a dove partner dude Nine thousand likes dude yo you guys better like this video so i can even get close to this man oh my god okay Reminder that the BMI is bullshit and created by a fucking eugenicist. Oh, hell nah. Not my son. What is the alternative, though? Like, when these people bring up the BMI, I always think, like, why is it bad, first of all? Like, it's not supposed to be really accurate. And if you don't apply, you don't apply. Like, there are people that I know that are bodybuilders like guys and girls that are muscle mommies and muscle daddies that have a lot of muscle and if they took the bmi test yeah it would come out that they're very very obese but they're not obese they're just really muscled up if you don't apply you don't apply but i think it's like really crazy to sit there and shit on the bmi when it applies to like 99 percent of people all you're doing is like telling people to not use the thing that they should probably be using it's supposed to give you a broad idea a spectrum of where you're at you could be a little bit over or you could be a little bit under it's not supposed to be perfect it's supposed to just give you an understanding of where you are so when these people hate on it i just think like what do you guys want to do exactly like you want to get like those uh those little like plier things to test the body fat percentage on your skin no you're obviously not going to do that you're just going to sit you're going to complain you're going to complain you're going to complain and the reality of the situation is you don't want anything you just want to be fat and you don't want a way to measure the fatness when that's unrealistic me just looking at you i'm gonna know that you're fat but you know go ahead slay queen edges if you don't want to do the bmi you're fine but don't shit on it in general because it was created by you bro the argument too of like oh this thing was created by a guy that things that i don't believe in you do realize for like all of time people were doing bad stuff and it was like totally okay like when you, when i was learning about like julius caesar you know this guy like literally went through towns and just killed people like that were defenseless and it was just okay you know that like he would just go through and they'd be like dudes like yeah we surrender we surrender like yeah that's oh so great kill them Killed all of them. Yeah, Satorians, Satorians, kill them. All of them. The woman and the children, no. We're good guys. Leave them alone. Sell them to slaves. Sell them as slaves. We're, we're better than killing them. Sell them as slaves. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be the best ever. And that was just normal. That was just completely normal. Now, Julius Caesar created the calendar. Huh? Like the modern calendar, to a certain degree, right? Created a lot of the... Uh, created a lot of the months, created how we use the calendar in a lot of ways. Are you going to stop using the calendar? Are you going to stop looking at the calendar and going, oh, it's Monday today. Uh, yeah, it's, it's October. Uh, October. Hey, isn't it that one guy that like became that emperor and like killed like thousands of people like almost every day? Huh. And it, like was overseeing an entire empire of like literally like 40, 50 percent slaves. Huh, I guess I just can't do months anymore. You see how dumb that is? Like, nobody's doing that shit. For a long time, things were just tolerated, and they were okay, even though they were bad. But our new modern understanding of things is different. So we, we apply things differently, right? So, no, that's fucking dumb. I don't care if the guy was a eugenicist. There was plenty of people that were terrible, disgusting people. Fucking George Washington was a slave owner, right? Are you going to disembowel that dude because he created America? Probably not. It's such a, such a dumb, such a dumb way of like trying to trying to understand anything, man. You are not better than anyone else because you're thin. It just depends on what you mean by better, dude. Um, I'm not better, but I'm definitely healthier. I'm definitely somebody that's going to be 100% like feeling better, definitely. So I don't know about that. 
Former fat people and fat people who are currently dieting are often some of the most fat phobic people ever. Yeah, because most of the time, if somebody is fat and they lost weight, they're seeing it from a new light and they're understanding that, oh yeah, wait, I was fat and I felt terrible and now I am no longer fat and I feel amazing. So yeah, most of the time this is probably true. I just want to point out the Oompaville too right here. The Oompaville, this TikTok, this TikToker is creepy. True, very creepy indeed. Anyway guys, we're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate it if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe. Sharing the video helps me grow in the algorithm. So if you could do that stuff for me, I would appreciate you tremendously. If you watch the video in its entirety, and or you're here right now leave it down below by typing in milk milk is good i drink milk probably once a week i used to drink it a lot and i know a guy that used to drink a gallon of milk every single day and then he started having problems he went to the doctor like i knew this guy for years right and he was like really serious about bulking and he thought like the milk like whole milk was like the way he was going to do it so you drink like almost a gallon a day or a gallon a day and he went to the doctor for his checkup and he got his semen tested and he, he was getting some cloggage because of all the lactose that he was drinking, dude. It was craziness. I didn't actually know that it was like that. But anyway, I just want to point out how beautiful you are, by the way. Um, you're a specimen and a half. I know you're lubricated on a daily basis through the process of drinking water to ensure that you're hydrated. I always come back in, right? I'll do something and then I'll go, I need a bottle of water. And then I'll go and get the bottle of water and then I'll go, oh, I got to do this other thing and I'll come back. And then I just have bottles of water, just multiple bottles of water that are doing nothing. Don't bottle, don't they just look delicate? Don't they look delightful and beautiful when you look at them on camera? That looks way better than real life. I don't know why, but you're beautiful. You're spectacular. You're the most beautiful, spectacular, amazing person on the face of the earth. I bet when you eat food, you don't even have to wipe your face. I bet that is like, Mm, you you don't need to just keep it on your face because you look great regardless of what it is no matter what you wear how you wear it, you look good regardless but anyway guys we're gonna end the video here if you want to check out my social media it'll be linked down below in the description it's just my instagram my twitter i guess x it's x right i just gotta feed into it at this point it's x um at discord twitter instagram all this other stuff will be linked down below in the description of this video all you gotta do is click the about and scroll down you'll see it and then also the description of the channel uh, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Peace.